Oh boy, it has been a hot second since I've had to say the phrase, Welcome to the Screen Age Podcast. I'm your host, Connor. And I'm Rodrigo. It's episode 74. We have been so damn busy. Yeah, a little MIA. But mm. we're back, hopefully. <laughs> we had exams at one point that took up all of our effort. And then I started a new job. So I took off so many things. And then I let the USB stick at home, so I couldn't edit because all my files are there, and I cried to myself. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks, but well, hopefully it's we're been rough. Hopefully we're settled and we're we're good to go now. We should be. We, we should, should be all good now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> what are we getting on to games? I believe we said games. There is nothing. Yeah, it's, it's quite quite weak for games. Um, I've actually had the one I want to talk about I've actually had for like the past like three weeks but we just haven't Jesus. recorded <laughs> um, but there's been a new game announced and I thought it was right. kind of interesting um, it's called I the Inquisitor thank um, god okay <laughs> um, the developers are The Dust I don't know The Dust The Dust yeah I'm not quite sure who it is but the the thing that caught me it's a it's an, an open world RPG and it's a story it's story driven and it's a based back in the obviously the, the Inquisitor days and you are an Inquisitor and you have to go and uh, like basically do what an Inquisitor does kill people that let you know the defied God and Jesus and all that and uh, and then but it's like there's choices that you can make like moral choices and like it'll affect the the outcome of the game and stuff and so like you can spare people or kill them or whatever and it'll um it'll change the ending and stuff which i thought was pretty cool hmm it looks it looks fun it looks cool it's still a bit away they just kind of announced that they haven't announced a release date uh so i'm assuming website is just by the inquisitor yeah I'm guessing it's going to be like next year or so. Um, and it's coming to everything. Uh, cool. By our previous gens, you know, obviously. I don't think yeah, anything are, new is going to come back to that anymore. Yeah, that's an interesting thing already. We have... Wait, before I continue this, how long has the Xbox Series X been out? I think it's only about to get to two years in... in that's November. fine because I had a weird feeling it was like it has been four years but no there's no way it's been four years anyway um, it's unusual it's not unusual I guess but it is it's interesting to see how quickly they're going to just okay let's just get on next gen and not do anything else I feel mm-hmm. like this is quite this is sooner than what happened with 360 and yeah, I feel Xbox like it, One is it? yeah I feel like it kind of it also kind of just happened out of like kind of straight away Companies were like, yeah. yeah, we're you can have it. It's gonna be shit. Like, look at Cyberpunk; it was like atrocious. But they were like, mm. you, you know, we'll put it out because you know it's still fresh. But they kind of were just like, yeah, fuck this. Um, I don't know if it's because it's it takes a little more to develop on the next gen that it's not easy to like, um, just have a version for. The, the older gens and you have to like almost develop two games at the same time um, and that's why they're just like we can't do this because yeah like you said the 360 to to the, the one there was definitely a longer period anyway well it felt like a longer period that before they stopped releasing 360 games it, it just I, now obviously that was back in 2014 when the Xbox One initially came out yeah but I still feel like I remember seeing games for 360 for a good while. Yeah. Like, I can't really think of it off the top of my head at the moment, but I, just, I still think that it was... It just I just feel soon, or maybe I'm just more aware of it nowadays. But, yeah, it maybe it might just be a thing that these next-gen ones, or current-gen now, are just so kind of particular and just so powerful... That if yeah. you were to put such a powerful game, it's like a PC game, really. If I can run, 
a really good game on say 1660 i'm like cool and then it runs really well on that but then i try to put it on to a 1030 and it's gonna run really badly that's kind of what it looks like it is with these now yeah like some of the games that we are experiencing are beautiful and brilliant and fantastically wondrous on current gen but if you were to put back onto the lesser consoles that can't run it as well yeah it's gonna absolutely just stutter away and chug its way along and the poor box is going to start exploding so <laughs> you're right it would be like creating two different games and that's a lot of money that that is a lot of money especially and and no return because probably no return. at this stage most people do have a next gen console so it, it yeah it'd be kind of sinking money kind of ridiculously you know mm. just throwing it away almost um, and I also think like they're so advanced now they're so detailed and and everything unlike 360 to 1 they were still you know mm. okay maybe for it's time it was advanced but maybe development wise and stuff it wasn't that difficult to yeah even, even they were still very pixeled so yeah yeah I was actually difficult. about to bring up even pixelated games nowadays may not be able to run on a 360 yeah and there are yeah. some like side scrolling games or platformer games that are pixelated or 8 bit not quite 8 bit now but they're certainly pixelated games that just would not be able to run on maybe even some well you wouldn't be able to run to their fullest extent on last gen but you hit the yeah. 360 there's no way in the nine rings that's ever going to oh, be no, able to actually run not. properly yeah <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. They, yeah, it does feel kind of fast, but hmm. I, I guess we don't really like. We're not. We are, ourselves aren't affected because we have next gen, and, no. and we have had for a while. So it's you know it's like normal to us. Oh Just yeah, as soon as we see a game, better. we know we can get it. Exactly. It is, yeah. as you said, we are a bit privileged in the sense that we can look at it and be like, ah, it's fine. Cause, like, it it's the entire fiery fury of not being able to get a next gen console seems to really have died down nowadays and there are still most likely shortages but it really has seemed to like calmed itself so maybe at this point we're not really seeing that many people being like oh i want to get a ps5 but i still can't get it like i'm i can see on my current page i can see a restock update but i also yeah. see a restock update for the xbox series x when i scroll up and down so <laughs> kind of makes no nothing yeah, I do think that the that has definitely died down for sure. I yeah, is there people that still don't have one because of shortages in their area? Definitely, but like here, Misery. definitely maybe in America, but here in Ireland, you can go into pretty much any GameStop in any county and you'll find a PlayStation yeah. Five. You know there will be one or there will be a Series X. You know, there there yeah. I I don't think the shortage maybe not here, but maybe in bigger cities there is but if you go to a small city surely there is some there surely I don't know but yeah this this game looks fun anyway it, it, look, it sounds interesting um, now that's one interesting game that you said sounds fun for you <laughs> I now have a game that will not be fun for you whatso fucking ever oh dear yeah it's called a Callisto Protocol okay and all I can say is, it looks like a next-gen fucking dead space. And it is horrific. It is terrifying looking. <laughs> and I cannot wait for us to do a Let's Play in it. Oh, dear. <laughs> they always drag me into oh. these things. Oh, it doesn't look great. Like, for you. It looks fantastic. Now, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's coming across everything. Even on um, last-gen consoles, which is funny. As you were just <laughs> saying otherwise. But oh my god. There's at the beginning of the of the trailer I was like, yeah, this looks okay. I was like, oh, it looks fine. And then it got like nice and close. Like this switch. And everything got claustrophobic. And then I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And it's by the co-creator of Dead Space, and it's certainly, certainly a dead space not copy or wannabe but it's definitely you can see the inspirations from it yeah but I would be interested to actually play this game because dead space is the only game 
that I ever had to just stop playing because I backed myself into a corner. And it wasn't because the game was bad, Dead Space is a brilliant game. It was just because I was an idiot and tried doing an achievement and then the game literally locked me inside a room with one bullet and that was it. Two enemies on the outside, one single bullet, the game told me to kill myself. So I, um, yeah, I had to just stop playing that game. So I'll be interested in playing this and not being stupid this time. Yeah. This looks terrifying. I don't like Yeah, this. right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, I just saw a couple of images and stuff, and I don't know. <laughs> it, do, it does look quite terrifying, though. And it's coming out oh, this yeah. year? Oh. This year. Uh. December 2nd, 2022, it's its initial release date. Now, it might be pushed back, it maybe pushed forward, I don't know. This was released in um, Sony's State of Play, which I didn't even know was being... There's so many set plays. Oh yeah, it's one of the like Nintendo Direct type of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's on? Yeah, I'll get that. Later. And it's on on Unreal Engine Five, so this shit's gonna be like in our face. It's gonna be real. Oh yeah, it's gonna look pretty good. Yeah. Unreal Engine Five. I don't know if we've actually discussed it on this yet. That is crazy. It's it's actually kind of scary how good it is. Oh, it's terrifying. Like it is so realistic. Like I'm sure the one that we can discuss that we everyone knows about is that train station emulation or simulation. Yeah, it's like it's real. Oh, it's yeah. like they walked around with a camera and we're like, yeah, this is where we are. It's scary. Like because I I, I did say before that like games are getting realistic, but it's getting to the point where it's like. It does look realistic, but you can still tell it's a game. Unreal Engine mm. is throwing that way out the window. It literally no, looks so like you're there now. Fucking terrifying. Uh, that's the thing. Like, um, people need to also make sure that they remember that games have art styles, and that's what uh, that's how a game looks. It doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't have to be a particular thing. A game has an art style. Yeah. If it, if it suits that, that's that. But this, this realistic thing, like survival horror games in particular and I like simulation games are is just going to get crazy it's just going to it's just going to be like you're walking around in real life and I, that's the thing like it, I, I might sound a bit weird saying it but I'll play a really realistic game and it'll look better than life like it'll look real stylish and pretty and all the sort of things, and that's kind of what would make you think, oh, it's still a game. It looks a bit too stylish. Yeah. So when you look outside and it's a gloomy day, it's like, oh, it's not that stylish, and like your eyes will perceive it in a way that's not like 4K or 60 frames a second. Your eyes will perceive it in a particular way. Mm. This, it's especially the fucking um, train station thing, yeah. was just like normal life. It didn't yeah. look too stylish. It's like the things still looked grimy around the place. It didn't look like it was running at like 120 frames a second. It looked like you were just, again, a normal camera roaming around the place. It looked like it was just a person walking around. It did not. It scared me, honestly. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah that's it. It's kind of scary how realistic it can be. Like, it literally is like you're at the train station. That is terrifying. Mm. <laughs> and that was just a random guy like that wasn't even yeah. a, a like a developer with lots of money that was just you know a normal guy that just developed a train station on the engine that's scary there's a there's, mm. a there's a picture there I have it here and it's like the recreation and the real one what they're based on and the recreation looks more real than the real one like that's fucked yeah, which then leads us to potentially believe that we're in a simulation. Because <laughs> if they can yeah, do this yeah. now, what's there to believe that what we're looking at now isn't a hyper-realistic Unreal Engine 5 thing? For people who... For like, if <laughs> the three people that do listen to this, one of them happens to be one of the people who are genuinely terrified about it, don't worry. The only time that they can mimic an actual simulation is when you can mimic actual people, and so far they can't really do it at the moment. Free will is still a thing. You're all right. Don't tell them. Don't 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 say anymore. 
Um, or maybe that's what they want us to think. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, Unreal Engine Five is utterly terrifying. Oh. But I'm very excited for games that will come out on it because it's just gonna be crispy. I can't wait to see what it does to like because there is a thirty ninety coming out, uh, which yeah. is way way overkill. <laughs> well, it would have been if Unreal Engine 5 wasn't there, so I want to see what it does to that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, ga- games are definitely going to be scary from now on. Mm-hmm. But I think they're also setting them up, setting themselves up for a little bit of failure because if one company releases a game that is just utter crispy and it's just beautiful realistic no bugs perfect on this engine every other game has to live up to that otherwise it'd be like the fuck is this shit you know mm. and that's why I'm saying and you need to remember crazy. that like it's not just because someone's realistic doesn't mean it's good like it's an art yeah. style if the game is realistic because it wants to be realistic and that the art style and story fits it then it should be realistic but if a game is pixelated and the story and the combat system and everything else and it suits a pixelated game then that shouldn't be knocked down for being a pixelated game just because another game is realistic now we've been saying this constantly but it's definitely a new worry of us as you just said because of how good this will look yeah like I'm looking at um, what is it called idyllic cycling it looks like an indie game, but it doesn't look realistic. It's just a nice, calm, like, painted world. And I know people, like, will overlook it because, oh, it doesn't look photorealistic, and I hate things like that. Okay, Battlefield games are, should, because of their style and because of all the other games, look as realistic as possible. Toy yeah. Point 2 didn't do that. But 5 and 1 look incredible, even mm-hmm. though they're World War games. But there are still games out there that are going to look even better as just kind of watercolored painted worlds but so people don't need to fucking turn around and be like oh this doesn't look good because it's not realistic you can fuck off yeah exactly now speaking of things that look <laughs> new and different pokemon scarlet and violet have come out and <laughs> i've got to admit you kind of want to go i admit some those trainers are going to make me act up. <laughs> Say what now? <laughs> now, if you type in... Well, maybe not, maybe not with your one. But if you type in the professors of Scarlet and Violet, you can't turn to me and say you don't agree. <laughs> No, I agree. There <laughs> it is. You said it. Uh, With all her truth? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. They've gone for a little bit of a different style for this one. All right. Um, yeah, like, I won't be calling them professor sort of thing. <laughs> or I will be calling them professor whatever they want but uh, no yeah th- like they've gone for a different art style usually it's a more of a top down thing isn't it with Pokemon games I could be kind wrong. of they've changed a little bit now oh my god she has fangs oh yeah that's the anime community gone <laughs> yeah yeah oh. it's not out, out it's not out yet but uh, no it's on. just been Released. It's released, yeah. The amount of Pokemon games is ridiculous. Um, I also don't like the way that they release two. I don't like that they do, like, Pokemon Violet, Pokemon Scarlet, pick one. Mm. Or, like, Sword and Shield, pick one. And it's like, oh, oh why do I have to pick one? No. There are already fan arts of this. Oh, dear. And I am sure there are already lewds. That's scary. It's amazing how quickly the Rule 34 community gets on that shit. 
That's scary. <laughs> Even no, the guy. How am I supposed to compete with that? <laughs> I mean, that beard, the hair, the smouldering eyes and chiseled jawline. Yeah. I love how the first sign, uh, sentence in you. this article is the internet has found itself in horny jail again. And yep, ah, there we exactly go. Say uh, it. I've found my first lewd uh, image. Wow, that was fast. Uh, yep, and I was just, I literally just looked up Pokemon Scarlet and Professors and I scrolled for a little bit and I found one. <laughs> God damn, people need to chill. We'll move on from this when I read probably my favourite tweet so far, which is <laughs> from, I'm not going to say the person's name obviously, but it's just, it would be so funny if Pokemon Professor Seda bit me or something, haha <laughs> lol, like maybe she bit me aggressively <laughs> enough to make me feel intimidated, but softly for reassurance, and that would be so funny, right? Lol. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, people, people are scary, that is scary. That is terrifying. Yeah, we should move on. Yeah, we should move sorry, on. Sorry, I was I was reading something. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, Not sorry. staring um, longingly into his eyes. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, we should we should move on. Yeah, onto movies. Onto movies. What do you have? Do you have anything interesting? I have a lot of Jurassic Park stuff, but like nothing really interesting. No. Right, TV shows. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Do you have nothing as well? I have one thing. Uh, it's cool. a couple of weeks old again because we didn't record. But we'll bring it up anyway. A movie that is utterly terrifying and should never... Wh- whoever came up with this... Oh! ...has issues because this is this is wrong in so many levels. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. What is that? <laughs> it's It's so unnerving unsettling I don't know what it is it's apparently the opening sequence to the film is Winnie the Pooh and Piglet eating Eeyore yeah eating 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 Eeyore eating Eeyore now I from what I from what you see in the I don't know if it was a trailer or it was just images I don't know like I don't know if it's people wearing masks or if it's meant to be like a bear and like a piglet and they're going around like killing. I kind of want it to be a bear and a piglet that have like mutated or something because that would be more interesting. But it's obviously masks. But it's, yeah, it's, this is messed up. Like there's, uh, that image is so messed up. <laughs> I I really want to see it. I, c- I kind of want to see it just for the, like, just kind of for what is this more than, like, because whoa, I actually kind of want to watch it. Racing the writing director, Mina Poo Blood and Harry, Reese Frack, Waterfield, that's a weird name. So Dead Central, okay, regarding specific plot points of the film, including that Pooh and Piglet will eat Eeyore. Holy shit. Uh-huh. Um, this needs to whoa they are real uh, they're real oh. they're not fucking according to Frank Waterfield the plot begins with Pooh and Piglet turning evil due to Christopher neglecting to feed them as he grows in adulthood oh my god so here's the full quote Pooh and Piglet experience a drastic drop in food as Christopher dro- grew up over the years they became increasingly hungry and feral and they had to resort to eating Eeyore then Christopher returns with his wife to re- to introduce her to his old friends, and when that happens, they get in in enraged when they see them. All the hatred they've built up over the years unleashes, and they go on this rampage that continues when they end up at this rural house with these girls. What? Oh fuck? my <laughs> fucking god! When? That is terrifying. But uh, what a concept. What a concept, honestly. What a concept. Honestly, who, like, I'd like to think that this guy was at home 
with his with his child reading them a bedtime story about Winnie the Pooh finish the story and goes oh and the kid goes dad what happens when Christopher Robin grows up and he just his mind wanders and comes back and is like I got the best idea ever yeah and just came up with this because this is utterly terrifying and how could you even look at Winnie the Pooh and go you're gonna eat people you're gonna eat that you're gonna eat that donkey like that. honestly for a while I was a bit like ah what the fuck I don't know about this one honestly after reading that I'm like that is incredibly creative and I will give you my risk that is like interesting yeah that's genuinely thought provoking it's so fucked up yeah it's messed up when's it out I th- I th- I th- that's what I'm trying to find I don't think there's a release date on it there's not even a timeline. They can't. They just released the trailer for it. Yeah, this is terrifying. Went to a blood and I haven't even seen the trailer for it. I kind of don't want it until like <laughs> it's actually out. Release. Yeah, it's just has yet to be announced they haven't said uh-huh. yet uh, but I don't think they probably expected the love for this to come out because they probably just got like ah, not a lot of people are going to like this and then release and a lot of people were like like us just oh what the fuck when <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it does have that weird kind of like feeling that it's like oh this is so messed up but I have to mm. watch it it's like I can't mm-hmm. turn away I must see how it ends that's terrifying I can't wait yeah this has to be uh, go to watch it a cinema job you know you have to watch this in the cinema oh yeah Wait. oh we got it I, like just that first scene's gonna be horrific though when they eat Eeyore. Especially mm-hmm. n- knowing now, because like before knowing that they were real and they were just human, you could be like, okay, they're just eating another human. You know, that's cabal- cannibalism. Yeah, it's messed up and everything. But now that they are the characters themselves, mm-hmm. it is going to be a little hard to watch. Mm hmm. Also, I just know that opening sequence is going to be them having fun with Christopher Robin and then, like, slowly him drifting away and then, like, starving. And just be like, you know, Christopher will be back. Surely he'll be back. And then just kind of, like, starving and then they just kind of both look at Eeyore and then just consume mm-hmm. him. Oh, even just the thought of it is terrifying. I can't wait. <laughs> that is terrifying. I'd like to think that someone's gonna like try to bring their kids because they'll just see Willy the Pooh and be like, oh, nice. And then they yeah, try to bring them in. <laughs> and this this is the thing, like, people are gonna be like, what, what do you mean people are gonna, uh, adults are gonna bring their kids to think it's a Winnie the Pooh thing? They're like, they'll see the trailer. There has been worrying amounts of this sort of shit happening. Where you're like, oh, we thought it was a nice movie, but it turned out to this. That, the amount of times I've heard that, I'm like, yeah. do you not look at things? Do you not, like, it's completely your own fault and negligence that you thought it was one thing, decided to no- go no further than what is shown in front of you, and <laughs> be like, oh, it's fucked up. Yeah. Definitely. I'm never going to be able to see... Um, we need to poo again after watching that film. You can never look at the, the, the original character and be like, oh, that's cute. You just be like, oh my mm. god, you met him. <laughs> yeah, this is. I'm terrified. I don't want to go to sleep wait. now. <laughs> it's uh, quarter to 12 in the morning, you're grand. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, we'll move on. We'll move on. Well, <laughs> not quite TV. I assume we to another thing in movies, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Have it, yeah. Cause I just discovered that there's a... I know it's a book one, but it's of Harry Potter. 
but there's a rare first edition Harry Potter book that has errors in it for sale. You know how much this is worth? A couple thousand? A couple of hundred thousand. Oh. It's starting, it's an auction that is starting at around a quarter of a million dollars. Oh my god. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. For like an original copy, like a, it, it's a copy with a mistake or something, is it? Yeah. It's amazing how books work like that, actually. I don't under, I've never understood the fascination of having like uh, a first edition book that had like a, a one spelling mistake on page 84. Like, what's so cool about having it? I don't get it. I guess because it's like one of a kind and there's no other book out there in the world that will look like it. But I don't understand why it's worth 250000 Like, if I make a mistake in an essay, I get fucking docked marks in it. But if <laughs> any other big one does, they get oh, paid J- two hundred and fifty grand. What the fuck? J.K. J- Rowling does it. It's two hundred and fifty. Yeah, Yeah. No, even though nice. she's already fucked off with everyone else, she can still make money off it. <laughs> yeah, that's madness. Like Now, we know the fact that she someone's won't make money from an auction. Yet. Yeah, we know that, but the fact that someone is willing to pay two hundred and fifty thousand for a book. Holy fuck. That's a lot of money. A similar first edition wound up going for four hundred and seventy one thousand dollars in late twenty twenty one and made the most expensive commercially published work of fiction in twentieth century ever sold. Oh my god. Like, imagine having, like, like, when it released, like, back in the day, and your man just came home and was like, oh, look, this book just came out. And you just have it in your shelf, and you read it, and it was good, or whatever, and then a couple of years later, you see, oh, this edition's going for this much. And you just realize it's sitting on your shelf. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're sitting on, like, a quarter of a million dollars just from a book that your mom came home and bought you years ago or if you threw it away how quickly can you throw yourself out a window like I was happy enough when I discovered that a Lego set that I had that I bought for what was I think 35 40 euro back in the day is now worth upwards of 400 no 500 euro and another one that I bought for I think it was 100 euro is now going for 1240 on a website I was happy enough with that but as you, imagine <laughs> Imagine. Imagine just being like, holy shit, I have that. <laughs> yeah, you just, just kind of like, oh, that looks familiar. I use that as a as, as a cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's mental. Utter, utterly mental. I don't know what's more mental. No, yeah, no, I do know. The fact that someone's willing to pay that much. Yeah. The man, so, someone, someone out there is like, oh, must have that. How much? 250 yes and it's like that's mental mental what do you no, even not, do with it you just have it in your room and be like oh there it is no it's not even that it's one person willing to do it it's the fact that it's an auction that one person will be like yeah I'll pay 250,000 and another person will go I'll pay more yeah but then you have it you're never going to touch it because no. you're not going to you're not going to go off and like ruin it because it is an, a valuable asset so what's the point you're just gonna have it in a room and be like there's the book I bought for 250k and I'm like oh okay now now what <laughs> I don't know I think it's a bit, a bit strange it's a mad yeah madness oh my god excuse me madness stuff madness but you won't you won't catch me doing that cause one no. don't care two don't have that much money mm-hmm. <laughs> But you have to have millions upon millions upon millions to even consider mm. doing that. To even consider going, yeah, yeah, I'll pay that much. Crazy. Crazy. Utterly, utterly, utterly. For a book with a mistake on it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't Rose understand if it was, like, first edition. 
like it's the first book the first publishment of it and there was only like 30 copies out there i'd get that but just because it has a mistake on it makes it valuable is is strange to me Mm. i don't know i don't know Any, any other movie stuff you have not that I can see that I won't possibly get in a little bit of trouble talking about, so. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Right. Yeah, we had the fucking Star Wars celebration thing, and we just had a bunch of re- releases and stuff like that, but I didn't know that this was a thing, so I can't really talk much about it. Yeah, I didn't know it was a thing either. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big shit. On to the big shit. Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Obi-Wan Kenobi came out two weeks ago. <laughs> we it have is. three episodes now. So far, so good. So far, so good. Enjoying it thoroughly just as much as I thought I would. Um, episode three was unbelievable. Uh, I know you haven't watched it yet, so <laughs> won't say nothing. But it is great so far um, a lot of people complaining about it they ain't shut up because we love it so shut up <laughs> mm. because what they're complaining about is dumb it's really annoying it's really stupid things like you probably saw the whole like um, people attacking uh, like racially attacking um, mm. the what's the is it the third sister I think so third? yeah yeah, the third sister, um, and it's just like why? Like I don't, I don't, I never understood that attacking someone personally for a role. Let alone, yeah. let alone racially attacking someone. Just attacking someone personally f- for a role that they did in a TV show or a movie. I I don't understand. I don't understand it. Yeah, and. Uh, at the moment, I don't know who to blame for because I actually I don't like her character. Now I obviously haven't gone after her and fucking racially abused her. Obviously not. Ooh, but, <laughs> yeah. but I I still don't like her character. Uh, but I don't know who to actually blame for it because I think the character yeah. could be really good. I just don't think she plays the character that well. She plays a re- she's a brat in it. But but I think that's what they're trying to get across. Uh, yeah. That, that's the thing I don't know who it is I, she's a brat in it and I think that's what they're trying to do but I wish she was crazy like I wish she was proper like snarling fucking off her head like a Harley Quinn sort of thing I mm. wish that rather than just a brat because that's all I get from it is that she's a brat in the show and yeah. like oh uh, I don't know who to blame for I don't know if it was her turn and be like oh I think this would be better or it's just her own delivery of it and they were like okay we have to kind of just take it the way she's giving it or if it was literally directions being like, no, can you not do it that way? Maybe she was 100% being like way more. Because the, in the second episode where she goes, come out or whatever she says, I was kind of like, if you were like snarling and if you were literally like, <laughs> like proper fucked and weird yeah. like that, I would be terrified for that scene. But since you were just a bit bratty, and you're like, I want to find Obi Wan. Then I'm like, <laughs> you, you, you lost me. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not going after being like, oh god, it's her fault for it because I don't know who to blame, and no one knows who to blame. But they're blaming yeah. someone anyway. Yeah, and like I said, you can you can dislike a, 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 the the character for whatever reason, like yourself, you don't like the character, but you don't have to go after the person personally, and be like you are like like you're the problem and all this and just go attacking them personally sending them hor- horrific messages and stuff hmm. there's just no place for that no you know it's like it's like in the Phantom Menace with that little kid okay the little kid that played Anakin was not a good actor and we know that but to go and like bully the kid a kid to bully hmm. a kid is insane like the kid would go to school and the the kid's parents that he was in school with would tell them to like bully that kid because he was so bad in Star Wars that is like crazy to me 
Like I don't to, dead people to personally attack someone, let alone a child, for just being bad at a role is is just crazy to me. Crazy, and they're doing the same thing with the little girl that plays Leia. They're doing the same thing. Yeah. They're like, she's a terrible actress. She's just annoying. She's she's trying too hard, blah, blah, blah. She's awful. Get her off. And I'm like, she's not bad. I don't. I didn't think she was bad. No. I don't think she's bad. She's playing a 10-year-old, you know. And I think she's doing a pretty good job at it. So, I don't know. People are... People just love complaining. They mm-hmm. love complaining about any little thing. And I think it's people feel entitled and they're like, oh, oh yeah. I, I deserve to have this be perfect. It's, it, it, it's my right for Obi-Wan to be perfect. And it's like, no, no, shut up. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't, I don't get it. People are really annoying. And then this is why we don't get like more stuff. You know, mm. uh, because they're just like they don't like it. So why do we even bother keep going at it? Like, if the Mandalorian season three comes out and people complain about it, I wouldn't. I would be surprised if Disney just go, yeah, fuck it, we're canceling it. And then people that love the Mandalorian would just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know, I I don't know. People love complaining for the sake of complaining, and instead of just enjoying a one off. TV show for a character that we've wanted to see for so many years you just go off complaining about every little thing Mm -hmm. just enjoy the fact that Ewan McGregor has come back as Obi-Wan enjoy him for the six episodes because we're never seeing him again yeah like that's that's the fucking thing I physically don't want to talk about this show with a lot of people because they don't like it and they will complain for ages but I'm like I do I do enjoy it. I like seeing what they mm. do. With it. Like, I hate as uh, it's three episodes in, and they're like, "Oh, all these characters are here, and these are already annoying." It's like, yeah, cool. Do you not want to see where it goes or how they intricately in- incorporate all of it into a wider universe? Do you not know how fucking difficult it is? Do you not yeah. understand that? Like, and the annoying thing is, is, people will then argue with that point. People will then be like, "Oh, but like all oh, this different stuff, and like they shouldn't do it. Like, what's the point in doing all that? It's really stupid. They're trying to make it huge and big." It's like. You don't understand how big it is. Like, could you? And if you would ask them, like, could you do it? And they'd be like, no, but it doesn't matter. It's like, it annoys me. It annoys me, yeah. like, deeply that people who dislike something will over the top give out about it. Like, mm. it properly hurts them. Like, even, I know, okay, there's probably those old Star Wars fans who would be like, oh, sure, I'm a, a long term one. This just hurts me. It's like, get your long term fan, which means you either have been hurt so many times. That you're clinging on for dear life, that's your problem, not ours. Stop making it our problem. Yeah. Or you're one that just doesn't watch it anymore. And if that case you don't watch it anymore, stop fucking commenting on things that you don't want to watch. And if you <laughs> are one of those people who are like, I don't like the show, but I'm gonna watch it religiously anyway, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. There's no two ways about it. You are a fucking idiot. If you don't like something and you watch it anyway, you're an idiot to me. Stop watching it if you don't like it, you know? Stop watching. Stop it's exposing simple. yourself to things you don't like. That is yeah. the that is the epitome of fucking insanity. That you are hoping that something will change by doing the same thing over and over again is legitimately the definition of insanity. If you don't like something and you keep exposing yourself to something you don't like, you're still going to not like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah, what's... Yeah. Just stop watching it. It's that simple. Stop watching and, like, it. Yeah, and, and like a, a lot of people are complaining about like, oh, this show's creating a lot of plot holes in A New Hope and stuff, and it's like, not really. No. You know, it was like, oh, when they fight in um, in A New Hope, uh, uh, Darth Vader says, the last time you saw me, I was, you were the master and I was the the apprentice. Yeah, he didn't say this was 20 years ago. You just, you don't know when mm-hmm. the last time they met. They, you know, they were like 20 years ago we saw each other, you know, or like, People are now complaining that your man that plays Obi Wan in A New Hope is like super old compared to like you and McGregor. And someone was like, Okay, from the Obi Wan series to New Hope is nine years. Okay. 
uh, Obi, uh, your man that played Obi Wan was sixty years old when he played him in the New Hope. You McGregor is fifty one years old right now. Technically, because it's nine years in the future, he is the perfect age to be playing mm-hmm. him. He is literally the perfect age. Also, nowadays people have better ways of taking care of themselves, healthy eating, uh, self maintenance, all this. Therefore, people look younger for longer. Back in the 70s, they didn't have that. Of course, someone 60 years old is going to look a lot older back then than now. That's not something to complain about. <laughs> Are you also telling me you can spend nine years on fucking Tatooine and you won't, you'll you still look as luscious as exactly. you McGregor will? My God, nine years in that place will have me grayed out in no time. Exactly. Two sons? Two sons. Anyone is going to be consumed. You know? Everyone will look old. Fuck me. <laughs> ah, it's, it's annoying. It's so annoying. Just complaining for the sake of complaining, like. But, but that's it. Like, if you don't like something, you are more than okay to voice your dislike of something when prompted. If someone's like, do you yeah. like this? You go, no. Or if, you, if you're a critic and you want to give your opinion on it, you are more than okay to turn around and say, even in comment sections, if you want to say, I wasn't really that a big fan of this thing. And you can create a discussion with other people. We are not saying you can't dislike something. But if you are going to give out about this thing, and you're going to constantly give out about this thing, and yeah. you're going to ruin it for other people, and the only thing you want to do with the series is give out about this thing, stop exposing yourself to the thing you don't like. Yes, just stop watching it. It's, it literally is that it. simple. It is literally as simple as stop watching it. If you, if you feel that you know? strongly about it, if you, re- if, you, if you don't like it, but you want to see where it goes, that's okay. Because I know you're going to sit back and be like, okay, I don't like this aspect of it, but I like this bit. You're going to give it a fair chance, but you're literally giving out about it. And you could not give a shit. Stop. For yeah. the love of God, stop giving out so loudly about things that people want to enjoy. Yeah. And then th- those are the same people that be like complaining about it online comment sections whatever and then the on f- on Wednesdays when it comes out they're the first to watch it yeah they're the first ones to watch it and then they're like okay now I can complain with more people online it's like they just want the attention they want to mm-hmm. be a little different and be like I want to comment this and I want people to like I want to get a reaction out of them which is terrible <laughs> yeah but anyway I love this I love Obi-Wan I love the series I don't care what anyone says. I think it actually adds a bit more to A New Hope than it um, than, than I thought it would. Because even like in A New Hope, Luke says to Leia, like, oh, Ben Kenobi's here. And she gets all excited. And it did. It wouldn't have made sense if they never met. But now they mm. met. So it's like, okay, she knows Ben Kenobi. There's a reason to trust him. So it's like, okay, now it makes a little more sense. It adds a bit more more layers to it. But no, people like to just pick and choose and complain about stupid shit. Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway, on to the next. <laughs> okay. What do you have? Oh, what do I have? Yeah, do you have anything? Oh, no, TV show. Okay, I keep going, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have two things. One that I know of, one I don't know of. Which you want? don't know okay the boys I know about the boys but I don't watch the boys no never watch the boys do you watch the boys I don't but I should yeah I probably should too heard great things about it season 3 came out though yeah uh, came out a couple of days ago uh, apparently amazing uh, no shocker there because the first two seasons again apparently have been unbelievable I mm. think I will eventually get around to watching it yeah um, I just I think currently I'm not in the mood for something like that. Um, but I don't know. I think I definitely will get into it. I, you know, I've heard great things about it. Um, everyone, everyone says it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, very dark and gritty from what I hear. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I, I do need to actually watch it. 
I seriously do. It's right up my alley. I just, for some reason, can't. Yeah. See, like, I'm terrible at watching shows in the sense that, like, I can't, like, get myself to watch the first episode. But when I watch the first episode, that's it. I'm gone. I'm hooked. I'm, Mm. you know, I'll watch it till the end. I'll binge it, whatever. But sometimes it's just really hard for me to just, like, press play and sit there and watch the first episode. I don't know why. I wish I could just be like, oh, okay, you recommended this and just go home and watch it. Mm. You know, I, I just can't. I don't know. There's something weird about me. I'm Even with s- movies. Yeah, I'm still, I'm stuck at the moment where, like, I'm not really into movies as much as I used to be and TV series. I'm focusing more on anime, but I'm just playing a load more video games. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know. I, I the, My issue with movies nowadays is, like, I'm so... Like when I come back home and shit like that, I will just hear stuff about all loads of different movies, ones I've never heard of before, and I'll just hear movies, 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 movies. So I'm like, oh, I don't have that drive to watch a movie. Even yesterday, I had to like, um, we we're talking about Jurassic Park. That's my favorite thing ever. And even then, yeah. they were we went on about the entire franchise. I was like, ah, oh, I don't really like it. But I like I like I'll enjoy the ones that I enjoy, and I feel like I have to like defend myself to like why I enjoy some things. I'm like I don't mm. I don't want to watch a movie and then have to defend myself no matter where I am, but why I enjoy a movie. I just want to enjoy some. The same with um, the Kenobi series. I'm I really do want to watch it, but I feel like I constantly will have to explain why I enjoy something rather than just me enjoying the fact that I can see a character that I love on screen again and watching it all interact with each other. If I can yeah. just say that and someone says, yeah, that'd be cool. But I feel like if, no matter who the hell I say it to, besides obviously some immediate friends, they will turn around and be like, but why? It just feels stupid to me. I'm like, cool. Don't take away, don't criticize the reasons why I like something. But with video games, it mm. feels like I can distance myself a bit easier from shit like that. Like, there will be people who will like video games that no one else likes, or there's more enjoyment I can derive from a single-player video game that some people may not like that I won't come in contact with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, definitely in recent times, Mm. everyone has just become a critic. Either movies or, or, or TV. And, like, everything that you like and dislike has to be, like, dissected and analyzed and people will ha- have to disagree with you and then you have mm. to like tell them why you, you you think that and all this and it's like maybe i just guess what maybe i just like it yeah. you know maybe i just do <laughs> like like for example i think riverdale is the biggest sh- load of shite in the world oh, yeah. but if you want to watch it go ahead i don't care it yeah. doesn't affect me i'm not gonna be like jeez that hurt. Yeah, I think I, no, people, I don't care. Watch it. People confuse what freedom of speech genuinely means. Freedom of speech doesn't mean you get to criticize every everything that people do. It means you get to voice what you think. Yeah. And if I exactly. voice what I think, you shouldn't be able. To, you shouldn't turn around to me and be like you're wrong, because that's then making me feel like I can't be like that, which then goes against any form of freedom of speech that I should be able to have. If I want exactly. to say I like something, you should be able to say that's cool. I don't like because of this, and then we get on with our lives. You shouldn't exactly. turn around and be like you're wrong. That's what I hate about it. everything. Is that uh, um, people may not even want to come across as that, but people will always come across as no, you're wrong. Yeah, it, it always comes up as like no, no, no. That's that's not right. Mm. You could. It, it's a simple and it's a simple choice of words. Instead of saying yeah. you're wrong, you could just be like, oh, I disagree because of this. Or something like that, or it doesn't have to be you're wrong, you know, it mm. could be I personally don't agree with it because of this. And then you move on. <laughs> like, how many times have we gotten on to like a lover spat on this show, but it has ended with, oh look, we're not going to come to terms, but I know where you're coming from, I see where you're coming from, and we move on. Like the amount of times, even just on mm. this show alone, we do it constantly. It's just because yeah. we know other people are not going to like things that we like. We're just going to move on with it. I'll say what I want and you'll say what you want. I'll say, okay, that's cool. I'm not going to criticize. If I ever come across that I'm criticizing you for what you like, you're thinking too hard about what I'm saying. 
Like, yeah. I don't care if you like or dislike something. Well, no, so I will care if you like or dislike something because I'm interested in seeing what you like. Unless you're telling me that I'm wrong to like it, then I won't care about you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't you can't tell someone's opinion is it wrong. Yeah. In most in, in mo- most things. <laughs> there are certain things. Uh, <sighs> but in life, not not yeah. movies. In mo- yeah, movies and TV. In movies and TV, your opinion is your opinion. Yeah. You know, someone will watch a film that everyone considers to be one of the best of all time. I don't know. Um, Citizen Kane. The Godfather. Citizen Kane. And people, most people would agree that that is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's generational, blah, blah, blah. It did fantastic things for movies. And then there'll be someone that's just like, yeah, I thought it was shite. Mm. And guess what? No one cares. <laughs> you know, just be like, oh, why do you think it was shite? For this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think it was shite because of that, but okay. Mm. That's it. Move on. Nice and simple. Not yeah. racially going after people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, I, uh, I don't know. Go on, like attacking people personally for opinions or them acting in a certain way is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Utterly crazy, but uh, yeah, that's. I don't know how we got there with the boys. Oh yeah. <laughs> how did we get to there with the boys? For a moment, I was like, "Oh, we're still on Obi Wan." Yeah, I- there was a few minutes where I was like, "Oh yeah, we're talking about Obi Wan. Oh, I might as well bring back the racial thing again." Why no, the fuck? No, we're- no, we were on the boys. You said the boys is good. I thought you heard good things. And then I said I heard good things and it was like right up my alley. And you were like, oh yeah, maybe we will get there at some point. And then you said... You just went off? Oh, that's why. Because <laughs> you said, I don't know why I don't really want to pick up new shows. And then I started talking about how I oh, feel yeah, like yeah. I can't like show. Ah, yeah, there we go. There we go. Wow. Full circle. That was crazy. <laughs> that was mental. Ah, uh, yeah. And the last thing I have is... Um, Stranger Things season 4 oh yes utterly amazing I must say so far I have two episodes left I'll be finishing it today honestly I have been fantastic season 1 was unbelievable season Mm. 1 was one of the best first seasons I've ever seen 2 was good 3 was okay and 4 has just honestly just taken that massive step forward not only like is the story good but it is actually scary like I thought the first three seasons weren't that scary season four has some scary scary moments and it's gone like a lot more gorier a lot of blood like it it really it's really looking deep into like the kids and PTSD and stuff from the first three seasons and it's kind of scary but it is very good. And the episodes are super long. Like super long. But you honestly don't feel it. Like an episode was like an hour and 30 minutes. And it didn't feel like an hour and 30 minutes. It didn't feel like I just watched a movie. It was crazy. But it's so good. So, so good. It is. Like I know we said it before. But yeah, it is just movies like. Yeah. Mental. The last episode that is coming out. Um, in the second part which is in, in July the the last episode is two and a half hours long which is <laughs> it's still crazy to me to think that a TV show has an episode longer than most movies um, now is it still two and a half hours long I had a feeling that it was I thought people were like oh we thought it was two and a half hours long but now it's shorter is it still they might have they might have changed it but um, I don't really want to look into anything in case I see spoilers. Um, but it might have been shortened, but the original, um, the original thing was two and a half hours. I don't know. Maybe they did make it shorter because that is a, an insane, um, uh, time, mm-hmm. for for one episode. Um. But yeah, have you watched? 
Um, Stranger Things at all? Yeah, one and two. One and two. You didn't watch three. Didn't watch three. Yeah, it's a it's an okay season. It's not bad. It adds a couple of more. It adds a couple of other characters that are decent. Um, it's not it's not the best season. Yeah. People probably come at me, but you know that's my opinion. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like I. Different reasons. I, yeah, it kind of went on a different. I don't know. I, I tried to go in a different direction, and I don't know. I just thought it wasn't great. I do prefer the original idea of Stranger Things. Um, yeah. I don't know if you if you know it, but it's originally was meant to be a, each season was meant to be a different mm. at a different location with a different set of casts discovering a different strange thing. Um but season 1 was so good and so well received that they were like we'll continue with this story. But I I would have liked to see the the other one. Um, to see what what it could have uncovered and done, it, oh, a little yeah. like the hunting of Hill House and or um, uh, American Horror Story that every season's different and stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a good few shows that you do that type of stuff. Yeah, but ah, it's good. I thought this was the last season, but apparently there's a season five as well. Oh, what? Apparently. I thought this was the last one. Okay. Um, do you know do you know what the budget for each each episode for this season was? I'm gonna go for like four million. Thirty million. <gasps> Thirty million per episode, more or less, on average. Oh god. That's yeah. crazy. Movies are made for less. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, oh, utterly crazy and those those kids are not paid a lot in fairness like in comparison okay it is a lot <laughs> like I think uh, Millie Bobby Brown is paid like it's like I think like quarter of a million 300,000 300, per episode okay that's a lot of money don't get me wrong I would love that money but for the amount of money that is in that show and it generates, mm. that's not a lot, you know. Especially because like, it's it's super long. I put know? this with um, Zach Braff made three hundred fifty thousand episode per um, for Scrubs. Yeah, and there's twenty um, episodes, twenty two episodes in each season. Twenty two episodes in each season, and he made three hundred fifty thousand dollars per episode. Now, probably not the very beginning, but as the show went on, like yeah. That is a ridiculous number, especially for. Hang on now, one momento while I pull up a calculator, which should be on my home screen, yeah, but it's not. Even like uh, Friends, like near the end, they were making almost a million an episode, each. Mm. There's seven of them, you know. Seven, six, seven. Six, 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 six. So like that's you know. I don't know. I, I, I of course I wouldn't say no to that money. You no, fuck no. <laughs> but I do think it's not a lot. But yeah, like what? There's eight episodes in nine. Nine episodes in um, what's it called Stranger Things. So say it's three hundred k. That's two hundred seventy thousand. No, two point seven million for a season of Stranger Things. That's a shit ton when you think about it. But yeah. Zach Braff was making seven point seven million for Scrubs. Yeah. Per season. Yeah, like let's see. I I got the, I got the money here. So, Winona Ryder is on three fifty an episode. Uh, David Harbour's three fifty thousand. Millie Bobby Brown three hundred thousand. The fact that they're being paid more than Millie Bobby Brown, and she's me. like, uh, I mean, the, <laughs> the fact, but the fact that she, uh, I know it's because they're bigger names, I guess. Yeah. But it is like she is the main character. But three hundred k, Finn Wolfhard two fifty. You know, and then the rest are on like two fifty. Well, I guess if I guess it's more so of like, um. What if you were like how old is Finn Wolfhard now? Nine 
1920? What's... What are you going to do with upwards of $300,000 at 19? <laughs> yeah, but th- that's not that's not to, for them to decide, though, is it? No, but like, it's like... Uh, it, that would just be in the, like, like contract negotiations and shit like that. It would probably be in the main... Like, if you look at David Harbour, might be looking for a house or some shit like that. No. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's probably because this was meant... Like, this is three years in the works. It was meant yeah. to come out a lot sooner. So, yeah, probably back then, three years ago, he was, like, 17, 16. So, yeah, probably at that stage, it was a lot. Probably season five, they'll have to be paying up a lot more now that yeah. they're all, like, a lot older. Um, like, when you're, maybe, when you're, like, you're not, like, yeah, it's, like, oh, you can look at it, like, oh, why is the main character not being paid a whole lot? If the main character is a teenager, their money is important to them because they're being paid for the job that they're doing but they're not like paying mortgages and shit like that while an adult one may be paying mortgages and other taxes and maybe even like supporting children and shit like that so it's just that type of stuff I guess so yeah yeah probably like I said I wouldn't say no to the money I, no. I take it in a heartbeat I take one um, episode yeah Half an episode. You know? Yeah. I'll even take a quarter of the episode. I don't yeah. care. I'll take it. I'll take anything. <laughs> yeah. I'll even take a tenner. I don't care. <laughs> I'll take any sort of... <laughs> Best for you. I'll be paid by exposure. <laughs> yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. That's, that's all the news I have anyway. Do you have anything? The only one I've discovered is that there is a possible renewal and revival for the original Teen Titans show, which would be interesting. Yeah. And I'd like to see that. Because the 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 original Teen Titans show was great. Oh, possibly one of the best animated shows that we've, like, like young adult animated shows ever to actually come around. And we were all very hard done by Teen Titans Go coming out. Yeah. As people wanted great. to defend that show, you can, but I felt quite hard done by it. I missed that kind of the grittier side of things that the other show kind of stopped with, and it ended on a cliffhanger as well. And I think that's like, it's interesting, I think her name is Tara Strong, yeah, she kind of comments on, she mentioned the reasons that, that yeah, there it is, so... Um, I don't think the initial reaction was actually to the show, so Teen Titans Go, more so to this, the, the disappointment of not getting a season six of the original Teen yeah. Titans. I'm, that, that's a very oh, fair yeah. response. It's probably my response in a heartbeat. Like, I would have wanted to see the, the cliffhanger of Teen Titans season five because there was a huge fucking cliffhanger. Then it got cancelled because yeah. it got dark, and, you know, back then they were like, we want things for kids. And even nowadays, like, we want things for kids. But now, I think they realize it's a young adult show not a kid show yeah so we could end up seeing this we could see um the revival of the original teen titans thing and continuation of season six and see where things are going and if so ha ah. <laughs> the longest time for for a cliffhanger wait oh boy that, it, that would be insane you know how satisfying it will be if it ends it'll be one of the <laughs> few shows however I, that's how I finished the sentence. It'll be one of the few shows to actually get its cliffhanger, um, you know, completed and... What's the word I'm looking for? No idea. I can't remember either. Satisfying ending, like, kind of... They'll have it... The show will be complete then. And, uh, resolved! The, um, they'll have it... They'll be one of the first shows to get its massive cliffhanger <coughs> ending resolved. That yeah. will cause a whole host of other shows... To be like, oh, hang on, wait, we are a cliffhanger ending as well, we'll come back, and then, eh, but I'll take this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, Tea Titans Go wasn't bad. N- no, it I'm, has its I'm funny moments. To believe it isn't. It has its funny moments, it does, but it, does, it doesn't compare to the original. No. And even the art style of the original, I prefer it over the, the other one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing quite like early 2000s animated shows. They have all ultimate um, art styles. Yeah. yeah. Like Avatar. 
Muted everything. Ring. I dropped the compass and almost impaired my foot. Um, Avatar, nearly everything on Cartoon Network. Like, holy hell. Yeah, there was a lot. They don't make them like they used to. No. Yeah, we sound so old. <laughs> At 22 or 21. Yeah. I'm nearly 22. Leave me be. <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You're always bullying me. <laughs> you and the other lads are older than me by a couple of months and you always make me right you know it. there are jokes I want to say <laughs> that won't come across really well on the show when you don't know us <laughs> I will I'm safe. obviously I'm safe the say to you after the microphone is off <laughs> I'm safe when the microphone is on <laughs> Oh yeah, but uh, that's that's all we have, I think, is it? Yeah, I'm done. Oh uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, make sure to follow us on Instagram uh, at the Screen Age pod, at the Screen Age, and uh, follow us on TikTok. And yeah, go to our YouTube where we post Let's Plays, and the podcast is there as well. And that's it. Bye bye now. Bye bye.